Today we have the Alaric Vega deck. Uh, this unit runs for around $3,500, so it's a little bit on the pricier side. Full size, full capability digital deck and uh, pre amplifier as well. Only a single knob uh, is on the front of this unit. It controls all the su separate sub menus that are available. Uh, it's a, it's actually a quite a great knob. It's weighted perfectly and spins great. You push it in to turn it on. You push the button again and hold it to turn it off into sleep mode. The unit actually contains a femto clock, which is accurate down to a very very small increment of a single second, uh, and that helps with jitter, reduce jitter, and also uh, you know helps with the up sampling. In this case, this one actually up up samples all PCM streams to uh, the megahertz. So um, this one's a pretty complex little machine. It actually has USB and does DSD natively as well, which is kind of a fun feature that a lot of other DACs don't have until you get into this price range. It does DSD 64 as well as DSD 128. Uh, it also, of course, does all the regular high-res uh, style of um, music, including 24-bit, 192, and others. It has uh, digital-only inputs as a pre-amplifier, so you can't actually stick um, another analog source into this and use it as a full uh, pre-amp. However, um, if digital is the way to go for you, this thing's got a, a pretty good substantial uh, amount of inputs to either act as a DAC or a preamp alone. You can This can drive directly into a powered amp and then be controlled by the volume knob. You can see here we have the USB input on the far right, Tosh link underneath that, two coaxial, AES next to that, and then on the uh, left side we have our uh, balanced and unbalanced output. So pretty uh, pretty diverse for digital input and pretty simple going out. Nothing too overly complicated on the back here. As you can see, there's no input selector directly located on the front of this. I'm just going to take you through some of the menus here real quick on this device as it kind of gives you a more uh, better idea of the feature set. You can see the input is still selected here from USB. This will change depending on what input you select. Um, and then also it has your readout here, which is very handy, um, that allows you to see what uh, the incoming bit rate is for the file you're playing. It also switches to DSD64 or DSD128, depending on if that's coming in or not. Um, this also acts as a volume control for the output in the back. Um, very handy, 1 through 100. If you click in like so, it brings you to the first menu. If you can see this pretty clearly. Uh, you can see that the input is actually uh, the number one option on this first entry here. When you click in, you can then see um, the ability to switch between each of these Tosh Link uh, coax and the AES. And the USB is right there. If I were to select AES, you can see that the the signal, the I'm sorry, the sign changes there to allow you to see kind of what you're you're dealing with. It's fun that it's an actual icon, not just uh, lit up words. Uh, you can see here there's also balance control, phase control. You can invert that if you so desire. This here, number four, is kind of a unique and cool feature for the device. The filter. As you click in, this one actually allows you to have four separate ones uh, that you can cater to your own taste. The default is four. My preference was also four, but during some treble hot music, I did find um, some nice uh, accompaniment with the mode three. 
So uh, my preference was uh, four for the most part and three if you are looking to do more treble hot listening. But for the most part, I stuck with the default four. When you're in this mode and DSD is being um, sent to this, this menu will actually change and have just mode uh, five and six. Six being the default that I also stuck with for most of my listening for DSD. So that menu automatically changes when you're running DSD. So there's a two additional modes for that type of listening. If you dive down into the system here, you can actually see um, a few more options. You can change the display if you want, put it into sleep. The um, most interesting feature on this menu, however, is the clock. Now, this uh, corresponds to the femto clock that is located inside here, which is actually uses a, a type of crystal that needs to be uh, temperature regulated to perform its best. So as this machine warms up um, in standby mode, you have the capability to lock it in to different um, clocking capabilities. The first one that you get, and that's what the stage it is in right now, is only two, auto and course. Because this is still warming up the crystal and in that warm up phase, you, you only have these two select options. Okay, so we've had a little bit of time to let this thing warm up. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when we go into this clock setting here. And this is, like I said before, directly related to the femto clock inside. You can see here now the settings have changed after it's been, um, you know, regulated to the correct temperature. We have coarse, fine, and exact. Exact being um, the best, and you can click to lock that in. And now uh, there's an extra dot illuminated here to show you that it's been um, calibrated to exact uh, use, the highest use of it, of the DAC system. You can alleviate the warm up time by just putting the unit into standby mode, which is located by pressing this button in and go into sleep. So in this standby mode that you see now, you will it actually continues to warm the crystal. So if you don't turn it off all the way like you did when I had to move it in here, um, you should be fine. And this is just a quick shot of the final menu here. So, overall, um, this DAC was extremely, extremely transparent. In their, my full review on the website, I mentioned it, it crosses every T and dots every I. It's really meticulous in the way it reproduces things. The DSD uh, uh, kind of had the smoothest edge of all the file types that I listened to. Uh, you can, it's so transparent in a way that it allows you to kind of see, hear the grain um, in lower recordings and lower fidelity. So it's very revealing. It lets you know what things really sound like, really um, kind of gets you close to that edge. It puts things closer to you than other DACs do. Uh, when I was doing some critical listening, I noticed that compared to some of the other budget DACs that the singer would appear four to five feet away with the other DACs, whereas this DAC, it was literally whispering in your ear. So there's some really exceptional performance when it comes to that type of closeness, intimacy, articulation, and natural smooth presentation. That's kind of where this meets both fields. You got really great detail on one side and really organic natural sound on the other and this is right in the middle of the road there. It's a very nice combination of natural sound presentation with really great fine detail that allows you to hear everything that's to be had on the recording you're listening to. So those are very nice, fe very nice features, very nice culmination of those two um, kind of other ends. So all in all, I really like this like this DAC. The price is, you know, cons up there with the rest of the high fidelity equipment uh, in the DAC market. You know that it's constantly changing. The DSD is a relatively new uh, file type that's kind of cropped up as of late. So things are constantly changing. 
uh, which makes purchasing a deck all the more tough. But if you're in the market for something like this and you have the money to burn, um, this is definitely one to check out in this price range. It's a wonderful little device. It really plays well and it acts pretty good as a preamp as well. This is the Alaric Vega DAC. A wonderful piece of machinery. I also enjoy it very much. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions, comments. You can leave them in the YouTube uh, section there. And also subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like this kind of thing. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great one.